Hey everyone, I'm Jared from Reap What You Sow Homestead. Today we're here to talk about uh, tilling in the garden. Uh, we've been working on this garden for probably a month now, trying to get it cleaned up, get the ground dried up. It's been really wet. And today I'm going to do the final tilling on it and we're going to start our rows, get it ready to plant. It's time to plant up here in central Louisiana now. Just hang tight and we'll show you how it's done. from Kevin and Sarah off Living Traditions Homestead. If you haven't visited their site, now would be a good time to check them out and uh, give them a like. They're very educational. You can learn a lot from them. This is a weed fabric that we're putting down. Uh, with the weed fabric, it won't allow the grass to go through, but it does allow the water to go through, so the water won't sit in the rows. And uh, I won't have to worry about hoeing grass or anything like that. With a garden this big, in my condition, for sure I can't do that. So It's a lot of work putting this paper down. These rows are about 100 foot long. But that, the way the water works, it soaks through this stuff, and the weeds can't come through it. It's supposed to work like that. It's, Kevin and Sarah said it works pretty good, so we're going to give it a shot. Now, they did ours. Their garden was flat. And we got rows in ours, and I did that because of the way the weather works around here when it rains, where the water could actually go down the rows and out the other end. It makes it hard when the wind blows, because the wind is getting up underneath these, this paper and pulling it up. So that's one problem we're running into. I don't know if it's going to work like that or not, but we're trying. We'll see, we'll see what's going to happen. We might have to just use more stakes than what you normally would to stake the paper down. And also we started out with one box of tape. 
one one box of staples and we got four rows of this paper you actually need one box per roll and these rolls are 300 foot long so to kind of give you an idea how many stakes that you need we're way short on stakes i got some stuff i'm gonna make me some so we need to get this done so we can get our stuff planted out here we plan on planting corn uh, okra, but we're not going to plant our okra yet. We're going to wait till the weather gets a little bit hotter before we put that in the ground. Uh, we're going to plant purple hull peas and some squash and stuff like that. But I've got pepper plants that need to be planted in our uh, raised beds. We're going to try to do most of those over there. And we'll move some peppers over here if I don't have enough room for them in the raised beds and maybe a couple of tomato plants just to see how they do tomatoes in the ground versus tomatoes in the raised bed because this is our first year of doing the raised bed gardens. Well, we're fixing to try to plant some corn. See what's going to happen. I'm going to be planting uh, some sweet corn, uh, some painted mountain corn, and I'm going to be planting uh, some popcorn. Uh, I don't know the name of it right off the bat, but... I'm not going to plant too much of that popcorn. I just want to see uh, the scissor over there. I just I just wanted to see uh, how it would do by planting the popcorn because they said that you can just take the whole kernel of corn and put it in the microwave and it pops. I want my grandchildren to uh, see that and see how they would like it. Okay, here is the painted mountain corn that I got from Baker Creek. Most of my seeds came from Baker Creek. And this is the Cherokee long ear popcorn that I got that I will be planting. I'm not going to plant a whole bunch of that, but I am going to plant enough to see if my grandkids like it. And this is a true gold sweet corn that also came from Baker Creek. Most of our seeds came from Baker Creek this year, but we did order some seeds from the MI Gardeners. Uh, page so y'all can also check out his the seeds are pretty reasonable and we're doing all heirloom seeds is what we're planning so hopefully everything goes well we're going to finish getting this paper rolled out we're going to get these rows planted and then we're going to try to get those peppers in the raised beds and we'll be back everybody take care god bless god bless bye-bye working in the big garden over there putting down the fabric paper but after a while that's bad on your old back so we decided to stop take a little break and we're going to plant some peppers since our raised beds are so high we don't have to bend over as much and uh we're this is a poblano pepper here and we are putting in the hole some worm casting is an organic fertilizer for the pepper plants and we're going to be adding some worm <laughs> Some rabbit pellets. I meant ra <laughs> rabbit pellets. I call it worm food. Rabbit pellets as a fertilizer too. And so everybody knows that the rabbit manure is not hot. So you can put it directly in with the plants and they won't be hurt. But we've got several kinds here to plant. We've got the poblano. We've got red, yellow, green bell peppers. We've got the chocolate bell peppers. I've never grown those before. And most of our seeds came from Baker Creek. And we did get some seeds, too, uh, from the MI Gardener. And we're going to be planting some jalapeno peppers. So this year, I should have enough peppers to make some pepper jelly. If you haven't ever tried that, you're missing out. But we're going to get back with you in a little bit when we get all this planted. And we'll touch base and show you how it's all done. But the gnats are starting to pick up and get bad. And we've got to get these planted. So we'll catch you next time. Bless.